What's up guys? On this episode, we do our first equipment review. We talk about how much to spend on that baseball bat and sack bunting and coach pitch. What are we doing? What's up guys, this is Wade Gaynor and you're watching episode 9 of the Wade Gaynor Talk Show. Glad you stopped by to join us. We're going to get straight into this weekend baseball. It's that time of the year where the seasons are winding down. A lot of high school seasons just came to a close. Some are still in the playoffs. Um, Little League starting to wind down. And you know, I've, I've come in contact with a lot of people who are wondering what they should do this summer if their kid can get one-on-one -on -one instruction, um, play on these travel teams, play in the rec leagues, what should they do? And really, you can't go wrong as long as you're practicing, okay? Practicing and playing games. It's that time of year where a lot of kids don't want to play anymore, all right? And that's fine if they don't want to, but if you want to be successful, you want to get better, you got to play and work every day, okay? This isn't one of those things you can just pick up next spring and say, well, I haven't picked up a ball or a bat since about June of last year, but we'll see how it goes. And then want to be starting on your high school team or uh, successful at any, any aspect of the game, okay? I always tell people, you can't just go to school, expect to go to school a month or two and learn anything, all right? That's why we go longer. So, the seasons are winding down. You're about to start on another team. Summer ball is all about getting better. So find a team where you're going to play and you're going to be able to get better as an individual, all right? If you're just interested in being on a team, that's totally fine. No big deal. I've got no problem with that at all, all right? But if you want to get better, you got to play in games and you got to practice. Now, this isn't one of those things where, hey, I couldn't get into the cage, Wade. What in the world am I supposed to do, all right? Well, we have some drills we've put up in the past. You can do it anywhere, okay? We're going to put up more, and also, you can get in front of a mirror before you go to sleep. Say I didn't get to swing any today. I can get in front of a mirror, check out my hands, work on my separation and my load. All right? I wouldn't go swing the bat in mom's kitchen, but you can get in front of a mirror, all right? Work on your load, and you got better that day. It's all about getting better each day, and then a few months down the road, next season, by the end of summer ball, before fall ball, you're going to be impressing coaches, uh, maybe some college coaches, maybe your high school coach, maybe your summer ball coach, all right? But we're not going to get better not doing anything. Now's the time to make strides, gain ground on your peers, and really show guys what you can do, all right? So, yes, it's hot. Summer, summertime is baseball time, all right? I don't want to hear about, you know, I always remind guys of the sand lot when they're saying it's too hot, Benny. It's too hot, all right? Benny wanted to get better at baseball, okay? I know it's a funny little thing to say, but it's true. Summer times where we get better and get ready for the next year, all right? So we're going to jump right into some questions. And remember, guys, hashtag AskWayG. If you like the show, ask us some questions. If we don't have questions, we don't have swings, we don't really have a show, which... Especially just you talking. Yeah, it would be me talking, which would be probably pretty brutal for a lot of people. I, don't know, I would love it. No, I'm just I, I appreciate that, man. Love this question. Absolutely love it. Um, appreciate you asking. So... What you have here is seven-year-olds, which is coach pitch, if I'm not mistaken, all right, or machine pitch, whatever your league does. And um, this, is, this is just an awesome question I'm sure a lot of people are dealing with. So the right balance of fundamentals is you can't have too many fundamentals, all right? This is a great time to be learning the game, learning how the game's played, 
uh, getting your body in the right position. It's a great time to learn things like what will I do if the ball's hit to me with the runner on first, runners on first and second, things like that. So we want to give these kids as much freedom to play the game as we can. All right. Now, me personally, I don't think there's anything wrong with playing to win a game. That's why we play games. I don't care if it's t-ball. All right. That might be a little hardcore for people. I love the fact that everybody gets to hit in t-ball. That's awesome. But I'm still going to play to win the game because that's just part of sports. All right. However, bunting, for this specific example, I'm not sure why we would ever be sack bunting in coach pitch, all right? I mean, I've never seen it. I'm positive there's been one heck of a coach down there, you know, laying on the old bunt side for the seven-year-old. I've got major issues with that, all right? He should be swinging the bat, okay? I've got issues with bunting in general. Okay, there's two times where I think you should bunt. One, kid can't hit. All right, there's three times. Kid can't hit, all right, in high school. He's getting the old bunt sign every chance I get. Number two, runners on first and second, nobody out. It kind of makes sense to bunt. I get it. Unless the middle of the lineup, guys that can hit. I would rarely call it, but I understand what people do. Also, late in the game, runner on second, nobody out. You might want to bunt him to third be an easy manufactured run. So, let's go back to the question. Seven-year-old's bunting, absolutely not. That's crazy to me. Sorry if I'm offending any of you coaches out there, but, you know, this is a guy that whenever I saw the bunt sign, you know, I kind of had something in my eye. Like, oh, I missed that one. You know what I'm saying? So, I know if my boys were seven years old, coach puts a sack bunt on, I'd be questioning what we were doing there, all right? It's all about the kids getting better, yeah, all right? Play to win, man. Play to win. I mean, I love to play to win, yeah. But that's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't know, I don't know if, uh, if the kids would know how to handle that, though. You know what I mean? It might be Drop, just you know, catch them on the heels, you know? A kid on third's picking his nose, drop the button down. <laughs> I get it. Another great question here, something a lot of parents are dealing with. How much do I spend on this? How much do I spend on that? You can go to any sporting goods store and you can buy a bat for 500 bucks or you can buy a bat for 50. How are we supposed to know which one's which? I know that if you have the greatest bat in the world, it's not gonna increase your son or daughter's ability to hit that ball, okay? So we've established that. The bat's not going to hit the ball for you, all right? However, there are better bats um, than others. Some are cheaply made, some are nicely made, some last longer, which is what I would personally go for. But I tell all parents, it all depends on your child's abilities and desires as a player, okay? If they're playing year-round, um, hopefully they're not playing year-round, but if they're playing a lot of games, they're going to get a lot of use out of that. Maybe that bat doesn't seem so expensive. If they're just playing in the city or county rec league, there is no reason to break the bank for baseball equipment, okay? So, sounds like this kid plays a lot. He's having some success, which is awesome. I'm all for it. Um, I never had the most expensive piece of equipment, ever, at any level, actually. Maybe spikes, shoes. I'm really big on taking care of your feet, um, wearing good cleats. but bats, anything middle of the road that feels good in your kid's hands and uh, gives them a mindset like, you know, they can do a little damage, that's probably giving you more than the quality of bats you have there. Whatever's in their mind that feels good, they're proud of it, they like it, that's going to be the way to go, okay? I would stay away from the most expensive and uh, I'd look online for good deals. Online's the way to go with these kinds of things. Um, I wouldn't get a used bat online i'd want to see that before i purchased it but online you can usually get you know 20 50 bucks off middle of the road bat um, your kid will love it he'll feel good swinging it but uh always remember it's not going to help him hit that ball all 
right, we've got another question here about how much to spend on an old ball mitt. All right, um, what are you laughing about? Uh, just ball, the old ball mitt. The old ball mitt, it. man. It's an important part of the game. Yeah. All right, this kind of goes along with what the what I said about a bat. All right, number one, it's not going to help you catch that baseball at all. However, you get what you pay for with a glove. Okay. If you buy a $50 glove, it's not going to last as long as a $250 glove, all right? If you're spending over $250 on a glove, I don't know what to tell you. I think that's a little, little excessive, okay? But um, if you get a lot of use out of that glove, it lasts for a long time. Once again, the kid's proud of it, feels good. Um, those gloves can hold up, all right? You want something with good leather if they're an experienced player. But if they're a little kid, I mean, you just go to Walmart, go to any sporting goods store, grab them a glove. They're probably going to leave it out in the rain, all right? I left out, like, my first five gloves I left in the rain. Dad came in, he's real mad, where's your glove? I go outside, it's ruined, all right? It's not good. So, luckily, he didn't spend a whole lot of money on those. So, if your kid plays a lot of baseball, he loves it, he takes care of what you get him already, then you know you might want to spend 200 bucks on a baseball glove all right if a kid's under 12 years old plays in the rec league plays about you know 15 25 30 games a year i think you know you can get away with a cheaper glove um, you can buy a really nice glove um, for 100 bucks all right you can probably get down 85 80 bucks anything below that's probably not real leather it's not going to hold up as long um, you're not going to get as much use out of that. So it's really about preference. But once again, stay away from the most expensive glove in the catalog. All right. Our kids are just like us. They want what's, you know, the most expensive. Assume it's the best. But I'm telling you, you can find a really nice ball glove for 100 bucks. All right. And it'll hold up a long time for you. So speaking of gloves, that gives us a nice segue into our next segment of the show which is equipment reviews. Something new we're gonna try out. It's our first one. We'll be doing it from time to time, not all the time, not every show, but every once in a while we'll do a review on uh, some equipment, keep you, the baseball player, informed. Coaches, parents, um, give you another set of eyes and opinions for this show. So this is a Rawlings Pro Preferred. It's the Pro 12 6KRT, all right? And let's take a closer look. So something we uh, like to look at, this is an infielder's glove, all right? It's a 12-inch glove, so actually it's more of an all-purpose. But, uh, you know, has a great deep pocket, which is really important. Um, the Pro Preferred series from Rawlings is, in my opinion, the best you can get. I don't get paid for saying any of this stuff, all right? But it is. Um, I looked at the price in this glove. This is over $250, but, you know, I got it for free, all right? So when you're a pro player, maybe you can go over $250. But whenever uh, my parents or myself we were buying gloves, I never went, went this expensive. But this glove's held up for two and a half years, all right? A lot of games, that's over 200 games, and uh, could still be used a lot right now. Maybe I'll continue my career playing slow pitch softball. This thing will work. But what we have here, the Pro Preferred, what it gives is a, a, a thick, lasting leather, all right? They have a Heart of the Hide series, which is a step below Pro Preferred, but I really like Heart of the Hide. Then they have their Gold Glove series, which is a more affordable glove, but also you can't go wrong with it. Um, you know, in the future, we'll talk about different gloves, but right now, this is kind of top of the line, okay? Something really important that people don't talk about a whole lot is the pocket. So right here we have the H-Web, and uh, this is my personal favorite web that you can find in a glove, all right? There's the H-Web, the I-Web. Uh, most infielders use one of those two things. Um, there's also the trapeze, but I always found myself enjoying the H-Web, and they don't make a whole lot of these, but when that ball spins in your glove, I think this web gives you the best opportunity to catch it. Um, it forms a nice deep pocket. Um, once again, I'm sure there's other infielders that would argue, but it's very durable. When I had the iWeb, 
you know, uh, after throwing with it day in, day out, a couple hard line drives, they would almost pop through. And this H-Web is extremely durable and sturdy, okay? Um, it it takes a lot to break this. And when it does break, you can just replace the laces, all right? And it's not too big of a deal. Versus that I-Web, the crosses right here, they get really uh, banged up easily. So, Pro Preferred Rawlings, um, my favorite glove, thick padding right here in the palm, and actually you can take it out if you loosen these up, a lot of infielders like that better, but you can form a deep pocket, and this glove will last you a long time. So, price is steep, no doubt, but it lasts a lot longer than other gloves, okay? And you can form a nice deep pocket there. Something I always tell young infielders, some flare them out, um, what I would stay away from is a narrow funnel, okay? There's no reason for that. You want, you want the glove as wide as you can. I mean, I had this thing as wide as it would go, okay? And um, I felt good with that. Whenever I was a kid, um, I wanted the 11 and 3 quarters, 11 and a half. Um, but as my college coach taught me, and I agree with him, you want the biggest glove you can get at your position. All right, the ball is not going to get lost in this glove. If you, this this glove is ideal for pitching, corner infield, and you could even use it in the outfield. Um, you could definitely use it up the middle, but it's ideal for a third baseman, no doubt. It's been a good glove for me. Got nothing but good things to say about Rawlings. This is high end, top of the line Rawlings. Eventually, we're going to review equipment, all ranges of price. Um, affordable gloves, um, in this case top of the line equipment, but as we move forward we'll, we'll you know, review more types of products, bats, um, cleats, you name it. So uh, if you have any tips for us, any questions about equipment, we'd love to uh, give you some answers, alright? Um, I don't get paid or endorsed by any of these, these companies, so I feel like I give honest answers and opinions about it all right um, i don't really have a dog in the fight so to speak so what we're going to do in the future every now and then we're going to bust out a piece of baseball equipment try to give you something to uh base base your decisions when it comes to equipment off of so that about does it for us here time to wrap up the show but before we do we really want to drive home the fact that you know i've gotten a lot of positive feedback in person, online, about enjoying the show, we watch the show, we see the views we're getting, but we have to have interaction to have content for the show. So we'd love to get your swings, hashtag Take a Swing Tuesday so we can get it on the show. We love the questions, it seems to be uh, people's one of their favorite parts of the show. All right, so any questions, there's no question that's too dumb, too advanced for us. Hashtag Ask Wade G. We'll get it on. We'll get it on a show, and if we can't, we'll just answer your question through social media. All right. So we really appreciate you stopping in. Your views. Just interact with us. So hit us up on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or any of our social media outlets. We look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing to us here at the show. And just so you know, Josh is going on vacation. All right, so uh, we'll see you two weeks from today on a Monday. We'll be back, but uh, we're going to take a week off so you can spend time with the family. Um, and until next time, verse of the week is John 14, 15, where Jesus said, If you love me, you will do as I have commanded, which is obviously love people, love God. All right, that's what it's all about. Thanks for stopping in with us. And uh, don't forget, interact with us. We'll get you on the show, and uh, we hope you enjoy. So on this episode...